Welcome to the post-show discussion, it's not amazing, it's really good. So um, we're going to start by asking a couple questions and then we're going to open it up to the audience. Um, so let's start with some introductions. Uh, I'm Lucy and I'm a member of Art31, which is based here at uh, the Gorbenkian. And it's all about getting young people involved in the arts. And I'm Emma and I'm also from Art31 and the Youth Board. <laughs> My name is Mark and I'm co-artist and director of Highly Sprung and we specialise in making work with, for and alongside children and youth. I'm Luke, I played Will in the show you just watched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Claire, I played Annie in the show. I'm AJ and I played Jay in the show. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so um, first question. Why do you think it was important to bring up these themes um, and to make a performance about this, um, <laughs> these about these issues? And, and um, how does it reflect youth culture um, in, in this day and age? Well, I'll take, I'll take the bit about sort of why, and then you can talk about the youth, because I'm not a youth anymore. <laughs> um, so for, for us, if we go to the hospital, and we've broken our arm, a doctor will fix it. If I go to the hospital and I say I feel sad here and I can't explain it, it's very, very difficult to try and sort of set the wheels in motion. It's hard to diagnose. And I'm not uh, for a minute saying they just throw you away with some pills because that's not the case. But it's, it's starting to get a conversation going about mental health and the understanding of of what mental health is, that we all have mental health. We need to have, we can keep mentally healthy. And at some time in our life, we may find ourselves with mental ill health. And that's really tough. I've had, I've had moments, I've, doing this project, I've started to think back at times in my life, and I have had some dark periods, of, sort of moments where I've just been thinking, no, I don't want to be here anymore, and, and it's not right. Um, and actually we need to be having this open conversation. I know that people in my family have had conversations with me and said, oh, I felt like that. And I said, well, I felt like that as well. And, and we have so many things in common, but the trouble is when we are suffering from mental ill health, we so often think we're alone and isolated. And that's the complete opposite, and that's why we need to know. You can talk about why it's relevant to the youth. <laughs> Obviously. Um, I guess uh, for, for, for the company and for us, we um, as artists, we're always looking, always working with young people. So how you spend what is, is it thousands of young people? 10,000 people. 10,000 young people a year. And individuals as, as people, I know Luke, Claire and myself do teaching. We teach a lot and teach a lot of young people. And we're always interested in what, what they have to say, what their voice is, because sometimes they don't get heard. And sometimes, I know from my point of view, when I was a teenager, or even now, when I went to university, I sometimes felt like I had no one to turn to, or I had no one to talk about anything that was going on. And it can really burden you, because you can't get that outlet out, and you can't express yourself. And I think this project really kind of highlights that there are people you can talk to, they don't have to be your parents, they can be your close friends, or they can be people you admire. Um, but to try and express that and turn to them and really talk about what's happening in your life and really, um, yeah, have a moment if you feel like I've had a really bad day or that's turned into a week and I'm just feeling really down on myself or you're, you're under a lot of pressure that you can turn to somebody and you can talk to somebody about it. And I think as characters, in terms of being Jay, Will and Annie, Jay as a character really has no one to turn to, which is kind of what maybe could start that possible that downward spiral. Because his, his father isn't there, his mother's never around. He's moved to a new place, he feels really isolated. While as maybe, I don't know what you guys would say, but uh, Will and Annie, they have such a, a tight bond that no matter what happens, they've always got each other. And that's what obviously said. I don't know if you can elaborate on that even more. Um. In response to the question about how it reflects the culture at the moment, um, I feel like even when I was, because I'm kind of, I'm not 18. 
I'm not 18. But when I was making decisions about what I was going to do for my future, what exams I was going to sit, and what I was going to do at uni, it felt like because you'd made those choices, well then you should be grown up straight away. From the day that you've like written it down, well then you've decided what you're doing, so we expect you to be able to handle it. And it's kind of, you're asked to make decisions really early on, um, and then kind of you're assumed that you've already become that person before you even had a chance to study that that topic or before you've even, even had a chance to move out and go to uni and live with other people and deal with bills and all of that stuff. You're kind of just thrown in just because you've made a decision and it feels like, it feels too early to be making those decisions but it feels also like once people have decided that, that's almost the first step of the journey and not to assume that they've gotten to that place already. Um, which is some, sometimes reflected in, in what's been written in the show and you know like Will's studying really hard for his exams and he always gets A stars or whatever and it kind of feels like that's consuming you all this pressure to like really achieve all these things and actually your skills might lie somewhere else you don't have to go to uni you don't have to do GCSEs you don't have to do A levels but all of this pressure on choosing those things kind of feels like you know that's what you should be focusing on that's the only thing you should be focusing on um, and I feel like doing exploring the characters and their relationships means that we can kind of reflect back on maybe personally anyway reflect back on that time in our lives when we were kind of assumed to be mature whereas I mean I'm still not mature but <laughs> it's about allowing ourselves that time to be young yeah and not assuming that responsibility of being an adult straight away and allowing ourselves to actually fail at something we spoke to somebody whose um, daughter was hoping to do drama A level, and he was—I think he was quite disappointed—and because he wanted her to do something else, we'll leave it at that. But we said to him, "How about if she does it? And how about if she's rubbish and she hates it and she's made a bad choice? What's wrong with that? So what? She can make the decision, she can regret it, fail at it, and then she can move on, and she'll have learned something from that. She'll have built resilience." And how about if she chooses it and she's incredible and she's made the best decision of her life? You could go either way, but either way is cool because failing is not actually as bad as it sounds. Um, yeah. Can, sorry. Can, do you want to move I'm on? Just, I'm just very aware you've asked one question. We've been talking <laughs> yeah. for 20 minutes. Right, have so we all want to answer the same questions? <laughs> so spot the performers, you like talking. <laughs> well, this might not help because it's quite a big question. Okay. But thinking about more the bigger picture, specifically in the UK, for example, um, how could we make um, sure that young people's voices are heard in the future? Like you kind of touched on the challenges and issues that we face regarding employment and things, but what about letting them, especially in the arts, kind of be heard and giving them the opportunities when they're younger to do that and experience that? How can we do that? <laughs> Everyone breathe in. <laughs> um, I I kind of feel like there's um, there's a voice that young people have that doesn't get heard very often, and as adults um, we either sit them in a classroom or we sit them in front of the TV or we do we have conversation, but it's not really to try and understand them. It's to try and guide them or to tell them how to do something or to show them that this is the way I did it. Therefore, you should learn from my mistakes. And as an adult myself. I, I, I do that every now and then I'm like I did that and no I don't bother um, and I think actually with especially when we work with young people which we all had the pleasure of doing today you get within Holy Sprung's work especially there's big moments where you get to say okay this is kind of a task that you're going to go and create something and even if it's just in an arts format and they get to create some movement or some dialogue or something that they, they can get to show people they're showing a piece of themselves and we accept that straight away and say that was great and I think that's really important for young people and often that doesn't happen in any other way a lot of the time and I think it's a really nice window to go actually what you just did which was you was fab we, li we live in a faceless society, so everyone communicates via a screen in some way. Um, and the arts allow people to develop a skill to be able to take that screen away and be able to interact face to face. And that's, that's a skill that is so underrated, unfortunately. And um, 
for me, I think the arts give young people a voice because that allows them, it, it allows them to understand themselves. And how, how can you understand anybody else if you don't understand yourself? It starts here and then it goes out. And that's exactly what Will's character says in the show. You smile, make somebody else happy. They make somebody else happy. All of a sudden you spread the happy disease. And it, yes, it's very shallow in sort of the way he describes it. But actually, when you start thinking about it, it makes absolute sense. Mm. If I'm happy and I might hold a door open for someone, I might say please or thank you or compliment someone. And that person just feels a little bit better about themselves. And generally, as humans, we focus on the negative. If I ask them to remember all of the negative reviews they've had of working with other companies, <laughs> um, they would be able to remember those. If I ask them to think of the positive ones they have working with Highly Sprung, um, the chances are they probably won't remember that because we always focus on the negative. And I think that by just, ch just changing the way that we think, I think the arts does that a lot. I think that allows them the voice. So has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask? How yeah? involved are young people in the show? How involved are young people in the show? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I wrote this in a tiny room looking out over an industrial estate, listening to music. Um, but I would say they wrote probably around about 60 or 70 percent of it via my head so Annie in my head is um, a girl I used to teach and I, I love her to bits and she will never know that this this she was I wrote her in this piece and I changed so much but some of the things that come out of Annie's mouth came out of this girl's mouth and you know I've I've had the I'm gonna be honest I taught AJ when he was 13, 14. Um, and I've had the great fortune and opportunity to see so many young people grow up that actually it's their voices in this piece. So although they haven't necessarily said, well, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say that, maybe when I'm teaching, I might use a young phrase. <laughs> like douche. <laughs> It doesn't work because it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> but um, all of a sudden, I learn from them a lot. So not directly, but indirectly, 100%. Anyone else? Yeah? Um, which one of the characters would you say is most like yourself? Wow. Like Mark? Is this, oh, OK. Oh. <laughs> oh, I totally will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I'm a, no, I was going to say I'm a little bit of you. <laughs> not really much like Jay. Um, <laughs> it's probably a good thing, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. Um, from my point of view, is, it was hard to play, to play Jay because it's so, he's so hot and cold. And when we were rehearsing, that was the thing they said. Um, to remember that he's hot and cold. One minute he can be like really happy. When he's with Annie, she brings out that happiness in him. And the next minute, he then is completely the opposite and he is determined with something and he's really strong world and I'm actually quite relaxed. Yeah, he's really relaxed. I'm really relaxed. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, which is, so it's really hard to find that kind of energy and that kind of <clears throat> drive. Um, but that's uh, some, of the, some of his characteristics, that his drive and his determination could be seen as a really positive thing because he's really committed and that, that them kind of people um, if you have something like a positive goal to drive towards, can be really successful. Um, but in terms of the whole character, not really like <laughs> I think I've got the same dance moves as Annie. She's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got like some her. awesome dance moves, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, <laughs> no, I think like Annie's spirit is definitely part of me. Or well, I'm part of Annie's spirit, I don't know which way around it goes. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm as... Hmm, as trusting as she is, because she's very, cause she's quite naive. I'd say that in ways I'm more like Jay um, in terms of his principles. Like if he really believes in something, he believes in it. And he will like go, like he will tell you what he thinks about it. And that's what, what I'm like as a person. But I'm, I'd like to think that I 
can take on other people's opinions and then tell them they're wrong. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I like to think that I could listen to other people's opinions and kind of let them influence mine. But if I have something that I really believe in, I think sometimes I'm quite principled. Sometimes it might be too principled, but um, but definitely Annie's spirit is, yeah. I'm a bit of both. When I was 16, I was Will. When I was 19, I was Annie. <laughs> and when I was 27, I became Jay. Yeah. All right, we have time for one more, maybe two. What, during the rehearsal time. period? Yeah. I'd say oh. first show. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, first show was like, just give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, <clears throat> we'd rehearsed it so much and we'd said the words so many times, but until you have an audience, I mean, I don't know if you're performing yourself, but you feel, you feel the difference of having people there that are with you on the journey. And I think just all of their energy kind of fed us and it kind of just built this real tension and, yeah, for me personally, that was a, whoa, okay, need to chill out moment. Mm. We, we did some work with uh, Young Minds UK, which is a fantastic charity. If any of you sort of um, look up on their website, it's fantastic. And um, through that training, they sort of suggested mind apples. And they say that apples are healthy for us, and we, we know that they're good. It's one of our five a day. I'm sure you've all had five a day today. Um, and actually, for us, we had to write down what keeps us healthy in our mind. So it's things that make us smile. So whether it's kicking leaves, skipping down the road is, is mine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do actually do that. And when I've had a bad day, I'll, there's, there's a bit of strip of road and I'll just go and skip and n hope no one sees me. <laughs> <laughs> but it just makes me smile. And I know yours was climbing trees. Yeah. And it's, it's, finding, it's finding a mind apple when things get tough and just doing it whether it's going for a run, going and watching a film or anything, but finding a mind apple. And that's, that's what we've had to do during the show. Mm. So last question. <laughs> We had a, a show um, the other day and um, a woman came up with her mum and her mum put her arm around me and thanked me. And she said, this time last year, my daughter was in a psychiatric ward and she couldn't have been here. She, even six months ago, she wouldn't have been able to come and see the show. And what was, I don't know if it was complimentary. I think it was complimentary, but I don't know how I, I need to take it. I'm still thinking about it. And it's going around in my head. But she said that when she was at university, she just assumed people would help her. And in the piece, she said, and when you were talking about James Pritchard, but they helped her, right? And she, she actually nudged her mum, and I was, sitting, I was standing behind them. Because normally this show is sort of a, a promenade show. And um, she nudged her. And then the other one was... Um, she said that when she was in the psychiatric ward, it was, a, it was a, a dark time for her, and she described it as there weren't, the funding was very, very poor, and people were self-harming, and they were sort of breaking out, and they were saying, we're going to go and kill ourselves. Think of the impact that we'll have when we die. And people will all mourn for us, and then they'll listen. And all of the things that she was saying, she said that in the piece, those sort of phrases were being used and she she just said and the mum just said keep on going keep on going it's a, a horrible sort of subject to have to sort of bring up and talk about and it's a difficult one but keep going and that that's something that's sort of stuck in the back of my mind and you're absolutely right and I don't know if there are any sort of healthcare professionals but 
we've deliberately put in some signs and um, some suicidal signs for Jay's character. So uh, reckless behaviour. Uh, when he's on the roof and Will goes and confronts him for the first time and he stands too close to the edge and takes pictures showing reckless behaviour. His fascination with death, why did Will's mum commit suicide, why, why, what happened, how did it happen, this fascination. Um, the idea of giving things away, he gives away his, his favourite book in the world. So we chose three out of I think there's seven um, signs of sort of someone who's suffering from uh, mental ill health and so showing suicidal tendencies. So we deliberately put those in as, as signals and as talking points as well. Wow, I think that's right on time. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. It was amazing to see and thank you for talking to us thank as well. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.